Okay, so we've gone over a little bit of background. Uh, now let's focus again on the uh, actual study. So let's say we find a school building where lead dust was discovered in the air from those lead-based paints. And let's say that the average IQ for these uh, 15 children that we learned about was 91. Okay, so our sample size is 15 and our sample mean is 91. Well, already 91 is below average, but the question is, is that far enough below average for us to say, hey, this is a pretty significant finding? That's what we'll determine as we move along. Okay, we also need information about our population so that we know about the sample and the population. For IQ tests, uh, the average IQ is 100 and the standard deviation is 16, and this is based on the way that IQ tests are designed. Uh, note that IQ is a scale variable, right? It falls along a scale. The distance between 99 and 100 is the same as between 100 and 101, so it's scale. And uh, IQ is normally distributed. Uh, like most uh, things out there that you can measure, uh, they tend to be normally distributed. So when we look at our population of distribution of IQ scores, our mean is 100, our standard deviation is 16. So now it's time to make that comparison between our sample mean and the population mean. And what we're going to use, as discussed previously, is a z-test. And what a z-test tells us, the essence of a z-test, is what is the number of standard uh, errors that our sample mean is away from the population mean. The larger the z-test result, that tells us that the sample mean is more standard errors away from the population mean. If we have a really huge z-test result, say that it's a z-test result of 5, that would say, hey, your sample mean is 5 standard errors away from the population mean. The probability of that happening due to chance would be almost essentially zero. Okay. Let's briefly talk about hypothesis testing because that's going to be essential anytime we want to collect evidence and evaluate whether or not we should reject our, our null hypothesis and support the research hypothesis. That's the whole basis for doing research. Okay. So for hypothesis testing, our research hypothesis is that the children who inhaled lead dust will have a lower IQ score than the general population. The null hypothesis, that's the alternative, is that lead has no effect on IQ or could actually improve it. If the sample mean is far enough below the population mean, then we get to reject the null hypothesis. So take a look at our picture up above of a distribution of sample means. Notice that I've shaded in the bottom left part of the distribution of sample means. That's referred to as the uh, reject zone. And if our sample mean is in that reject zone, we're going to be able to reject the null hypothesis, allowing us to support the research hypothesis that something took place. Okay, now typically, if there's no special treatment going on, a sample mean should be close to the population mean, which is why, in general, if you want to estimate a population mean, it's a good idea to go out and collect a sample and use the sample mean to estimate the population mean. But keep in mind that, theoretically, any possible sample mean could take place. Generally, the sample mean will be close to the population mean, but again, theoretically, it's possible that you could get a really extreme sample mean just due to chance. And that is going to wreck a little bit of havoc with our hypothesis testing. It means that sometimes, just due to chance, you may get bogus evidence. That is, evidence that would make you say, hey, something's going on, uh, when really it was just due to chance and nothing really was taking place. The probability that the evidence will make you say, oh yes, yeah, something took place and it happened just due to chance is set to uh, 0.05. That is in the behavioral sciences and in several other sciences, uh, we say we'll allow a 0.05 probability uh, for uh, for evidence to uh, make us think we should reject the null when we shouldn't. Okay. If the null hypothesis is true, 
that lead has no effect or actually helps IQ, there is still a 5% chance of our accidentally rejecting the null hypothesis. Right? That's our alpha level. And again, take a look at that distribution sample means. All of those X bars that you see, all of them are possible. So most likely the X bars will not be in the shaded region. Most likely the sample means won't be in the shaded region. Uh, if our alpha is 0 0.05, the non-shaded region would probability of falling in the non-shaded region would be 0.95. So if the null hypothesis is true, most likely we're not going to reject it, and that's good. 0.05 of the time, we will. Okay. Now on the positive side, uh, if there is a real effect, we would expect our sample mean to, that is if there's a real effect of lead, if it really does harm IQ, we'd expect our sample mean to fall in that shaded region. See the line drawn, the vertical line drawn through the distribution sample means? That's our decision criterion. We say, hey, if the sample mean falls on that decision criterion or further into the shaded uh, reject zone, we will reject the null. Okay, So we will reject the null hypothesis if the sample mean is beyond the decision criterion in the shaded region. Otherwise, we retain the null hypothesis. We expect the sample mean to be far below the population mean if our research hypothesis is correct. Right? So specifically, uh, we expect the sample mean will be in the shaded reject region if the research hypothesis is correct. Okay. Now as mentioned, the z-test will let you know how many standard errors you are below the mean. If our sample mean is at, is at least 1.645 standard errors below the mean, then we get to reject the null hypothesis and support the research hypothesis. That negative 1.645, that's where our decision criterion is. And everything to the left is shaded, and that's our uh, reject zone. And you're wondering, where did he get this negative 1.645? You can get it from a z-table. You would uh, have to look up a p-value of 0.05 and find out what's the corresponding uh, z-score. Uh, our z-table will help you to approximate it, but you'd actually need a, a more sophisticated z-table to get the actual negative 1.645. But I'll let you know, anytime you do a one-tail test, it's going to be, if you expect the sample mean to be below the population mean, it's always going to be negative 1.645. So it's a value we just know. And when you read the section on hypothesis testing, it'll go over that in a little bit more detail. Okay, so the value, negative 1.645, that is standard errors below the mean, identifies the start of the shaded region. The probability of any sample mean in that shaded region is 0.05 or less. So if the null hypothesis is true, there's a 0.05 chance that the sample mean will end up there even though no effects going on. And that would be bogus evidence, and that would be an oh-no type thing. We would be incorrectly rejecting the null. On the other hand, if our treatment has an effect, that is, if lead dust is actually harming IQ, well, that's right exactly where we expect the sample mean to be. We expect it to be below the population mean, and pretty far below the population mean. Okay, with that theoretical background covered on hypothesis testing, let's get down to uh, the actual mechanics. So we need to calculate the z-test. The first step uh, for calculating z-test is to figure out what is the standard error. To figure out the standard error, it's approximately equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Our standard deviation for the individual scores is 16 and our sample size was 15. So when we will say 16 divided by the square root of 15 and that comes out to be 4.13. What that tells us is the variability for uh, sample means is a lot less than the variability for individual scores. Right? Individual scores we have a standard deviation of 16, lots of variability possible for uh, a sample size 15 
uh, those sample means are going to be closer to the population mean. Their variability, if you will, their standard error is 4.13, which is much less than 16. Okay, once we know our standard error, that becomes kind of our unit of measurement. So then we go ahead and we calculate the z-test, and our z-test is the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error. And our sample mean is 91, our population mean is 100, and our standard error is 4.13. And when we do the math, that comes out to be a negative 2.18. That is, our sample mean is 2.18 standard errors below the mean. That's pretty far below the mean. Okay, then next we're going to evaluate our z-test result to find out what does this mean. So, we make a decision. We'll reject the null hypothesis if the z-test is 1.645 uh, standard errors away from the mean or, or further out. Notice uh, that the sample mean uh, for our particular uh, research uh, isn't that uh, shaded reject zone. Our sample mean was uh, 2.18 our sample mean was 2.18 standard errors below the mean, right? That negative 2.18 means we're below the mean. And the 2.18 itself says we're 2.18 standard errors below the mean. That means that we're beyond our decision criterion of negative 1.645. So our sample mean is not one standard error below the mean, not two standard errors below the mean, but 2.18 standard errors below the mean. So we'll reject uh, our null probability of that happening due to chances 0.05 or less. Okay, so here the z-test as mentioned was 2.18 negative, uh, indicating the sample mean was far below the population mean, and that the probability of this happening just due to chance uh, is 0.05. So we say, well, 0.05 this could be due to chance, but most likely it's because lead dust does impair uh, IQ. Our null hypothesis of no effect or actual improvement from lead dust uh, was rejected based upon our evidence collected. The sample mean was 91. As a result, the research hypothesis was supported that lead dust actually does impair brain development. So conclusion, uh, lead impairs brain development. Notice that to evaluate this evidence, we need to know about probability distribution of sample means, and hypothesis testing. You may want to go back through the workbook uh, to review those topics and then listen to this narrated PowerPoint again uh, to uh, further solidify your understanding of these topics and how they're related.